Hello and welcome back to Larry's Prairies, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. So today, or well, ignore the fact that yesterday's date's on the uh, t on the title slide. But this week, of, you know, perhaps the biggest I issue of note for that we've been faced with it was the weather, or rather, lack of weather, since as of this weekend, it was predicted that we'd have some significant snowstorms this week. Uh, both, you know, one was supposed to come yesterday, and we got less than an inch. And there was also a prediction of snow Thursday, and it looks, and the latest weather forecast suggests that's not going to happen either. So, for t for today. <laughs> For today, I I figured we'd talk about an animal that's associated with snow, but in fact has about as much to do with snow as uh, to this week's weather did. So let's let's meet it. Yeah. Okay, kingdom Animalia, an animal, of course, phylum Chordata. We we're dealing with vertebrates as we usually do. And today we're, we're going to be in a class Aves, so we have a feathery friend rather than a furry one. Order Anseriformes and family Anatidae are waterfowl. The, the, two, the, two, the two taxonomic groups are almost identical. There are four additional species that are considered Anseriformes, but not closely enough related to the Anatidae. Anyway, the, so the Anatidae are the... Uh, your typical waterfowl, ducks, geese. <laughs> other than living in the water, the other notable biological feature of this family is that they're some of the only birds where, the, where males have penises. <laughs> other, other birds, they just have cloacas, which are you know, open, you know, openings that, ser that serve as, as a your organs for urination, defecation, and, and sexual intercourse. And, and so the males and the females uh, just mate by pressing the openings together. So, anyway, that, <laughs> that anatomy are different. They're, more, they're the more typical ex example of a, of a male and fe males and females. <laughs> and Today's particular species is is Anser cirrulescens, the snow goose. Well, there it is. Note that note that it comes in two colors: the snowy white, and a, and another color form that's that's known as the blue goose, although it, it's really more of a brown. Anyway, about height about 30, 31 inches, roughly on average. There's two subspecies, one that tends to be a bit smaller than that, one that tends to be a bit bigger, but weight five to ten pounds. Again, the smaller subspecies are smaller, the bigger ones, the bigger ones toward the higher end. Wings, wingspan is about the same for, for both subspecies of the snow goose, 53 to 65 inches. The snow geese are herbivores, they mostly eat grasses. They, the color variation, so it's not, so it's not a gender distinction. Males and females doesn't matter. It's not a seasonal thing. These do not change color in the in the winter like, like some mammals are known to do. They, they they are whatever color they are year round. And it's not the subspecies thing either. That that's mo that's mostly varies the size of the animals. So you find both you find both colors in. All of the snow goose populations, the, the individual goo goose stays the color it is year round, and it's entirely a hereditary factor which which color you happen to inherit. And so, and so, the reason why there's nothing interesting going on with the color is because the snow goose is not actually hanging around in the snow. Well, it is going into the high Arctic, but. The blue area is there on the map, but it's a migratory bird. So, do, so during the during the summer, late May to mid August, it's a it's nesting up at, you know, up at the very northern tip tip of Canada, and and it's, and it, that's that's when it that's when they when and where they're reproducing, and other 
and then as soon as it starts to to re to really get cold, they fly they fly south. <laughs> so and so there's so the snow goose is not you know doesn't actually spend that much time in the, in the snow. I mean, I guess it spends some because there's the old joke about what about weather in northern Canada that there are two seasons, July and winter, but not. Yeah, as I said, it's not really associated with snow that much because it's fly it flies south. So that's that's really the reason why there's no, the color distinction. You know, hasn't evolved to be anything interesting. Both colors just exist because there's no evolutionary pressure to do for it to be otherwise. The snow geese don't have to be camouflaged against the snow because they're not spending much time in the snow. And like, and likewise, they're they they're in a situation when they migrate south for the winter isn't something where the, where their color would give them an an advantage. We're having the uh, darker color would give them an advantage there either. So it's kind of a neutral trade, and both colors persist. And also of note that right now the snow goose is a species that's overpopulated, mainly because the food. Because their food, their food supply is is particularly good during, during their their winter migration. Uh, the snow geese have learned to take advantage of uh, cultivated farmland and base, and uh, heart, and uh, scavenge off the remnants of cra of uh, crops that are left that are left behind of, over the uh, the winter season. So uh, things, you know, anything that was mi was missed during harvest, the geese get. And with that abundant food source, the population has has expanded more more than than it historically was. And so, with the overpopulation of snow snow geese, is somewhat of a threat to the environmental stability of their 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 summer homes up in the high Arctic, which of course is not exactly an abundant ecosystem to begin with. And so that's a ma that's a matter of some concern. We there's been some attempts to try to control the population by, in, yeah, instituting hunting seasons and other measures, but it hasn't been all that effective. We still have more snow geese than we need. That's that's what to know about about, about this species, another animal that's. <laughs> As I said, it's associated with snow, but doesn't hang out there in it as much as you'd expect. <laughs> Information, which is mostly from Wikipedia on this, it's a fairly common well, and well-known animal. And the images are from, really from the Wikipedia contributors that share, Creative Commons share like licenses, so that also applies to this video. And, well, that's that. <laughs> Another species that may or may not be interesting on a week where the weather has not been so interesting as we might might have expected. I guess all to the, all to the good, especially from the perspective of students who wouldn't have snow days anyway because we're in virtual learning. <sighs> have a have a great week, and we'll see you again next week with another animal.